Hello everybody and welcome back to the 12 Universe. I am your host Jitch and you are watching ECW. As always, we are from undisclosed location with this episode of ECW. We call it the ECW Warehouse. It's located in um, it's, an, it's an underground circuit. You won't you won't be able to buy any tickets. This many people, they all. They all just have lifetime memberships to this one. Look at look at all these people. Let's just keep keep looking at them. That's what we should do. Well, here tonight on ECW, we have got a stacked show to get you ready for this Sunday's Survivor Series event, including what we're kicking things off with, as chosen by the ECW General Manager himself, Mr. McMahon, his chosen pick to win the ECW Championship, Kane, who came to this brand off of uh, McMahon's own volition, giving him back his mask. He is going to be opening the show, as you can see, with a gauntlet match. The following handicap match is scheduled for one ball. Approaching the ring, weighing 323 pounds, Kane. So Kane is going to come on out here tonight. And uh, basically, what we're, what we're going to be seeing tonight is we're going to be seeing two very similar types of matches with a hardcore championship match in between. So kicking things off here tonight, first of all, as you can see, Kane coming out to the ring ready for his ECW Championship Collision with the Champion of Champions, the big show, this Sunday at Survivor Series. And he is going to go up against Team Charbo, which of course, as you know, this Sunday at Survivor Series, ECW's other match, a Survivor Series style match, which will feature Chavo Guerrero, Sin Cara, and Husky Harris up against the powerhouse Ezekiel Jackson, Mason Ryan, and Vladimir Kozlov. So here tonight on ECW, McMahon has decided to kind of cross over the two matches, so to speak. We're going to kick things off with a gauntlet match. Kane going to take on Chavo Guerrero, Sin Cara, and Husky Harris all in one match. This could be a, a serious loss of momentum for Kane. I guess we'll wait and see. And his opponent from El Paso, Texas, weighing 215 pounds, Chavo Guerrero. But on top of that stipulation. Up next, we'll be having a hardcore championship match. Vladimir Kozlov, once again, going to defend that title this week up against Gold Dust, as you voted for. And in our main event, as one of the three members of the powerhouse are unable to compete, considering they are going to be fighting for that hardcore championship up next, Big Show is going to be in a handicap match where he has got to take on the other two members of the powerhouse. So he's got it slightly easier than Kane in the sense of that uh, he's only going to be up against two people, whereas Kane's up against three. But Kane gets to take each one on in one-on-one -on -one matches and work his way through a series of three matches, similar to how Big Show became contender for the ECW Championship. Whilst um, the Big Show is going to have to go through both Mason Ryan and Ezekiel Jackson at the exact same time in a two-on-one. I don't know who's got it better. I mean, honestly, if I'm going to speak strictly from numbers and statistics and, you know, all that business, it's it's got to be Kane. I mean, the guy is a 300-pound monster, and uh, he's going up against two cruiserweights. Husky Harris may give him a little bit of trouble, but I don't see him struggling too much with Chavagura or Sin Cara, as, of course, this show kicking off has already started to show. Off the ropes. Kane going to try and make very quick work of everyone in this match, if I had to guess. He's got to be in the right mindset to take that ECW Championship away from the big show this Sunday at Survivor Series. Honestly, one of the most unpredictable matches coming up this Sunday at Survivor Series is that ECW title match. I don't know who's going to come out on top, whether it's going to be Big Show or Kane. I know there's going to be a lot of destruction. I'm just hoping we actually get a finish. Trevor Guerrero actually nuts enough to try and stand up. I'd just take the loss nice and quick. Save yourself. This guy's got to go through Ezekiel Jackson, Mason Ryan, and Vladimir Kozlov. And whilst he will have Sin Cara and Husky Harris at his side, the powerhouse are going to be no joke this Sunday at Survivor Series for the likes of Chavo, Sin Cara, and Husky Harris. And of course, we know this all started because of Chavo Guerrero, which is why he, it's rec recognized as Team Chavo. Um, Chavo Guerrero got a victory over Mason Ryan after stating that he was one day going to become the ECW champion, to which Mason Ryan mocked him backstage said that he never stood a chance and that he was looking at a future ECW champion. I don't know whether Mason Ryan or Chavo Guerrero will become ECW champion, but obviously it's it's good to know that their sights are set on the goal. They need to uh, to focus on that. 
Absolutely. Big boot just knocks Chavo flat on his back, and Kane looking to get the first elimination in this gauntlet match. Sorry about that high-pitched background noise. I don't know if that's going to get picked up, but I'm going to apologize in advance. That is the washing machine. I kind of didn't think this through when I put that on. Oof. Big clothesline. Is he going to get the pin on? I mean, Kane trying to, as I say, make very quick work of Chavo Guerrero here. Sidewalk slam. Not even going to waste a choke slam. He's going straight in for that pinfall on Chavo Guerrero. And Chavo really showing that, that heart of a warrior. That's what Guerrero means. And oof. This probably is the, the end for Chavo if I had to take a guess. Absolutely. So here comes the next opponent, which is Sin Cara, tag team partner of uh, Chavo Guerrero. One member of Team Chavo at Survivor Series. Don't know why I keep saying that. You already know that. Very quick to go on the offense on Kane. A smart move to try and take, oh, take down the big man, but that didn't really work too well. No time limit on this match up here tonight, as they won't be on the handicap match. It's uh, it's going to be uh, a fall to the finish. McMahon has decided. Of course, if you're wondering where this will land Kane on the ranking systems, well, he's already the number one contender. But if you're and more so, if you're wondering what this will mean for his win-loss record, believe it or not, this still counts as just one match. So, despite the fact that he may end up pinning all three opponents in this match, this is still um, just just one victory for Kane if he comes out victorious tonight. Uh, same as if uh, Team Chavo wins, Chavo will get a. Just really want to look up there. Chavo will get a victory on his record books, despite the fact that he actually took a loss, because this is kind of a handicap match that's just broken up. It's not over until the bell rings, and the bell has not rung. Outside the ring, I feel, is one place you really don't want to be when you're in the ring with... Well, when you're in a match, sorry. You're out of the ring. When you're out of the ring with Kane, that's when there's real trouble. And Sin Cara looking to run right back to the ring. Uh, as Kane is going... What? <laughs> that's not what I wanted at all. Well, I mean, Kane, he, he was going for something on the top there. I couldn't quite tell what's going on. We clearly cut to commercial from it. Oh, nice move. Sin Cara actually pulling off something kind of cool. Like in the gear tonight. I'm very proud of that one, actually. I, I didn't know how that was going to look in motion, but I'm, I'm proud of that. I took the move to PS3 as an opportunity to make a few new threads. Not many, admittedly. Most are just the same copied over or like slightly shaded differently because I went for quite intense colors quite a bit in the original for some reason. So I just kind of uh, tried to improve on myself a little bit. But in this case of Ch uh, Sin Cara, he had one that I just didn't really like. I can't remember what it was now. Um, he had a purple attire, which he still got. But his other one, I can't remember what it was. I never really used it, and I didn't really like it, I think. Uh, and I replaced that one with this, this white and black combo. Oh, it was a gold one, I think. I think I gave him like a gold attire, and I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't really like gold attires all that much. Well, yep, this is the camera angle we're working with. As Sin Cara comes back into the ring, Kane very quickly whips him down. Oh, drop kick across the face. Is that going to be enough to get the pinfall on Sin Cara? Yes, Sin Cara is out of this, and in comes Husky Harris. Oh my god, Kane! Oh, very nice reversal with that. That is not Husky Harris's theme. Oh, I forgot that they had the wrong themes in this game. Whoa, Husky Harris! We know he's been all business lately, but this would be massive. That was very close. A two count on Kane. STO, the moment he came into the ring, was really something else. First guy to get a big move off on Kane, and of course Husky Harris is the big man of the team. Yeah, I forgot him and Mason Ryan had their themes messed up in this game. He's got Mason Ryan's theme, and Mason Ryan has his theme. Really weird. I don't, I don't know why they did that. I think there was quite a few screw ups in 12. I remember people were really mad that Henry is a heel in this game, but he doesn't have his heel entrance and stuff like that. I remember that when this game came out. People were not too happy about some of the things that were a bit outdated. I think there's quite a lot of people in this game that were already released when it came out, too. 
But a lot of that's to do with the fact that the game was actually finished in like, like May, June time is when they normally have these all done. Well, they're kind of just putting like very small finishing touches rather than like mocapping and stories and stuff. Hence why uh, the arenas are always like the most recent one is always the one after Mania because that's when they finished working on the game. Well, Husky Harris, I mean, he's definitely bringing it better than Sin Cara did. I think Sin Cara was definitely the weak link of Team Chavo uh, in this match. Well, clearly, we have one person that does not like Team Chavo right there in the crowd. I give Husky Harris a lot of credit. This guy, like, I don't know what it was, but that victory over Ezekiel Jackson last week, we saw a very different side to Husky Harris. He, he flipped a little bit. He flipped a switch and he started to, I'm almost, I'm honestly, I'd say psychotic is the best way to describe his behavior after beating Ezekiel Jackson last week. I'm starting to see a, a different side to Harris, one that I think could be a very important part of Team Chavo uh, this Sunday at Survivor Series. Maybe we should call it Team Harris instead. I mean, Sin Cara didn't even need a choke slam to be eliminated. I can give a lot of credit to Sin Cara, but I've also got to be honest with myself. And it wasn't a, even a choke slam to get him out. And Kane now signaling for the end, signaling for a choke slam. And Husky Harris, I think, was very quick to uh, to work around that to make sure that did not happen. can really see the, the the difference that size can make sometimes i'm not talking down the cruiserweights of raw ecw or smackdown but sometimes you really can see the difference that that can make in a match and this is the perfect example husky harris has really held his own quite nicely against kane at least to begin with now it's kind of it's kind of going downhill from here but Kane determined to get that choke slam off. He didn't get it earlier when Husky Harris entered the ring. He was looking to make very quick work of Harris. And Husky was able to reverse it, but this time... Just got flung through the air. Don't think that's something Harris is used to. And Oh, he managed to uh, survive because of a rope break. Well, that, that'll keep you going. That going to be enough to get the job done on Harris. I mean, he's already connected with that choke slam earlier, and yeah, that was really it. Harris was out from the choke slam. He tried to fight a little bit, but the moment Kane got him flat on his back, we knew he couldn't kick out. And Kane has just run the gauntlet. He has beaten all three members of Team Chavo. We've seen nothing but destructive force of destructive force in the ECW championship scene since this brand made its return. From Vader to Big Show, and I think Kane is going to put on one hell of a match with Big Show. He's clearly ready. This did not set him back at all. I am really looking forward to seeing what Big Show and Kane can dish out against each other. It's going to be carnage, but <laughs> there's a very happy Kane. As we move on to the hardcore championship match, Vladimir Kozlov up against Gold Dust. Can Gold Dust finally win his first piece of gold here on ECW? Like a nice wide Russian to get your morning going, eh? Vladimir Kozlov, the hardcore champion. What a man. What a legend. Vladimir Kozlov, in his second hardcore championship reign, he is the first ever hardcore champion. And I think he's been doing real well just lately here on ECW. But this man has been full of determination. Nothing short of determined. Goldust has been trying so hard to make an impact here on ECW since coming over. And although I don't believe he's he's won anything yet, he's had some pretty impressive showings, if I'm not mistaken. 
However, I do not actually recall, because my memory is not very good. Gold Dust's most recent match was a loss to Kane, um, just a week ago here on ECW. And uh, here tonight, with that 6-11 to overall record, that 3-5 to this season, he doesn't want to repeat last year's, he doesn't want that 3-6. to And of course, I'm sure he'd love to capture his first championship. However, he is up against Vladimir Kozlov, who is the 16-9 to right now in terms of win-loss records, retaining the championship last week against David Otunga. He's got an 8-4 to this season, an 8-5 to last season, so if, if either of these two were to take a loss, they would be matching last season's win-loss record, so someone, <laughs> someone is going to have doubled up what they did last season, which is quite appropriate because we have almost come up to a year. Since we started, I mean, it was it was uh, Survivor Series last year. Survivor Series this Sunday. We're finally going to hit that one year. It took a lot longer than a year to hit that one year because I started on April first. The whole gimmick was that it was going to look like an April Fool's joke, and then I was actually going to bring the series back. I remember that very clearly. And it is now September first that I am recording this. So there have been five. <laughs> Five months to the day so far. I'm hoping to get all the way, including Survivor Series, done today. But I don't, I don't know about that. To be honest, that's quite a lot, especially uh, with three Survivor Series-style matches. It might be one of those where I like get half the show done and then carry on the rest afterwards. But I don't know yet. Gold Dust taking some serious control in this match to start things off. Vladimir Kozlov, though, with that quick tie up, got the arm caught. After Survivor Series, we begin the road to the Royal Rumble, which is one of my favorite events ever. Honestly, it's, it's right up there. I believe it is actually my number one event. It's the one I'm always the most hyped for. You never know what's going to happen at the Royal Rumble. And the Royal Rumble match is just such an exciting match in general. But of course, we do still have TLC in between, which is full of excitement all around all year. But really, I think that this is quite a great connection because you've got Survivor Series, which is a great specialty type of match. And then moving on to that, you've got TLC, where the year finally comes to an end. You've got some great hard-hitting TLC tables, ladders, extreme rules matches, because there's no such thing as a chairs match. You get it all. Um, and then... Uh, Oh, excuse me, and then um, moving on to, um, I guess you could technically have a chairs match, couldn't you? You could do an extreme rules match and then just set every object under the ring to be chairs. Although there's more than four objects in the wheel, so you can't actually choose everything in the wheel. You just have to hope they don't whip out any of the other stuff. I guess you could kind of have a chairs match. Um... And they've got Royal Rumble, which, you know, it's a fantastic uh, show, fantastic main event always. Uh, Elimination Chamber, which is just a really fun match. And then WrestleMania, which is obviously, you know, the big one. It's what it's all building up to. And then Extreme Rules is really exciting now, because although I've never really been a big lover of Extreme Rules, Extreme Rules is the sign of the end of a season and moving on to the next one, which is always really cool. So, the, you know, the, the final six months of the season, because we're about halfway through, uh, they're real good. It gets real interesting. I don't even think we're halfway through, actually. No, we must. Yeah, we must be, because it starts in in May, and uh, we're now in November. Or I'm thinking about real life dates, where it's actually now September. But no, it's it's the middle of November. The year is 2010. YouTube's really catching on this year, right here. I'm considering starting a channel. Maybe I'll do it next month. Say around the, the 23rd. Big move coming. Gold dust. Full of determination. 
I'm so interested in that handicap match coming up next. Big Show going up against Mason Ryan and Ezekiel Jackson. Kozlov doesn't really seem to have his head in the game when it comes to the powerhouse just lately. He hasn't really shown a lot of connection to them, and he hasn't really shown any concern about this Survivor Series matchup this Sunday. Kozlov seems to be in his own world, focusing on his hardcore championship, focusing on, you know, having stellar matches like the one he had with Big Show a few weeks ago here on ECW. Like, I feel like Kozlov's almost kind of mentally disconnected from um, his own group. I feel like the powerhouse, you know, he's kind of, he, he doesn't care so very much anymore. I don't know what that's all about, but it feels that way at the very least. Kozlov now reaching under the ring and he's grabbed a, a steel chair as him and Goldust go for a, a nice walk in the park. Goldust being a little bit of a weirdo right now, and I never really understood why he does that. You know, obviously, head games are one thing, but honestly, I think sometimes Goldust's got a little bit of a screw loose, you know. I think there's a little more to it than just than just he's he's a little quirky. Oh, laying in to Vladimir Kozlov with those steel chairs. Oh! That's a special move of gold dust. He just pulled on him right there. That'll shatter some dreams, if you know what I'm saying. Kozlov, oh, how could you take a fan's cup like that, Kozlov? Oh! Oh! Right in the eyes of gold dust. He's just walking all over him. Gold dust gonna sit back and watch. He seems to be enjoying the punishment. I'm sorry, was the hardcore championship just slung over a metal rail? Did I see that correctly? I mean, I know it's the hardcore title, it's literally a broken championship covered in, like, tape and paint and stuff. I think mold, too. But, like, was it, was it really? Was it really just slung over the back? What is happening here? Fight forever. <laughs> I mean, there's a time limit now, do we just, do we just let them go at it for the next 14 minutes? This really does seem like some cringy NXT 2018 spot. What <laughs> was that? Diamond calls up actually showing signs of hurt. I think Goldust really managed to get the better of him in that battle of the steel chairs. What an epic thing that was. Can we uh, can we get a highlight of that scene with some Star Wars music thrown over it? Again, this is a no you know. Some some intense lightsaber fighting music, you know the one. Ko Kozlov saying no. Oh god, the hardcore title man! What a what a title of pure privilege, of pure awesomeness. Ladder just hung over the fans right now. You got to be careful. Oh no, they're chatting holy crap. Peter Griffin in the house. Represent. Kick to the midsection by Kozlov, but Goldust manages to catch him with a headlock, and we're finally going to focus on actually uh, competing in this match, I think. They've had a lot of time to just play around with weapons. I don't know if Goldust knows what he's doing anymore. Kozlov celebrating the fact that he's outside the ring. What a sick man. Cross falls count anywhere in this match. They can, championship can change hands at any given time. Any pinfall anywhere counts all the same. Kozlov laying into Goldust with a sledgehammer right now. I feel like that, that's kind of a finishing point of a match. A sledgehammer is no joke. But of course, Goldust to his feet. Goldust looking like he's... No, okay, I thought he was going to set up some kind of like running attack into the corner, like a big boot into the steel post or something, but no, he's grabbing that replica World Heavyweight Championship. Goldust finally holding a World Championship for the first time in his career, and he got the referee! Goldust! He's unhinged! Oh, the Iron Curtain. It descends. Kozlov obviously realizing he can't go for the pinfall whilst the referee is out. So he goes for the crutch. Pin him. 
Go for the pin, Kozlov. You don't need to do this. You're risking your championship for the sake of more damage to an already defeated opponent. He takes too much punishment. He's going to start fighting back eventually. That's how fighting works. You just somehow recover and can fight back. Kozlov in control. But Gold Dust just won't stay down. Oh, he slipped him right into that belt. And he picks him up again. And he's got a steel chair now. Kozlov, ruthless. Got Gold Dust. DDT onto the chair. Please pin the man. He's taken enough punishment. I have turned blood on, by the way. I'm not sure why no one ever bleeds. Oof. I tell you what, Goldust, he's got that fighting spirit, but I think Kozlov's a little too bent on destruction right now. Goldust hurt him before he hurt... Goldust. <laughs> I went a bit blank for a second there. And I think that bothered Kozlov to the point where he just seems to want to hurt Goldust more. Could be got Kozlov's downfall in this match. Look at the arm. Oh, a big kick. Oh, and a big strike. Gold dust. Final cut, maybe. No. I mean, that might be the final cut. He's called enough things that. I think this might be it, though, honestly. Kozlov's taking a. Whoa. I guess he's not taking as much of a beating as Gold dust, to be fair. There you go. Gold dust now looking for the final cut. Is that going to be enough? It's got to be enough. Goldust has just won the first championship of his career. I'm telling you now. There you go. Kozlov got soft. I don't know what happened to him there. He really blew it. What started off as Goldust's match became Kozlov's pummeling of Goldust for quite a while. But in the end, Goldust captures his first championship here on ECW. I told you he was looking to turn things around. I told you he didn't want what happened to him last season to happen again. And this is now the outcome. Gold Dust, the hardcore champion. Now he's just got to survive everyone you vote against him. So, you know, go easy on the guy, go hard on the guy, really whatever you want, but you got to be sure to vote for the hardcore championship. To move on to what main event, Big Show, the ECW, the champion of champions. He's going to compete in a handicap match against the powerhouse's very own Mason Ryan and Ezekiel Jackson. Well, this one's gonna be a hard hitter for sure. Kane may have had to have gone through two cruiserweights and one heavyweight in the sense of Chavo Guerrero, Sin Cara, and Husky Harris, but the Big Show is up against two absolute powerhouses, as their team name refers to, as he's gonna take on the powerhouses Ezekiel Jackson and Mason Ryan in a two-on-one handicap match, which we've been told is elimination style, similar to Kane's. In the sense that Kane had that gauntlet. So Big Show's got to be able to take out both men. And um, I believe this is a Tornado handicap match. Which means he's got, got to take on both men at the same time. McMahon really ruthless in the way he handles the Big Show. And it shows. Yes, I really did go and fix Mason Ryan's theme before he came out. I didn't want him and Husky Harris completely swapping them. I ain't even sorry. So the big man from Wales, Mason Ryan, coming out first here tonight. Big Show has already dealt with this man in the past, I'm sure of it. I'm sure he has. Batiste 2, as they call him. Pounds. 
Sorry for all the background noise, I was putting a jacket on <laughs> in the back. Still am. Still am. Uh, I was picking it up first. That man has got some of the widest shoulders I have ever seen. That is a very, a very broad guy, Ezekiel Jackson. And I think this is going to be an interesting one for sure. Jackson is a former ECW champion, but not a former ECW world champion. He held the title back when it was considered less than a, a secondary title. Uh, it was the lowest ranking championship you could compete for once upon a time, but McMahon has really brought it up to the top as a world championship. And Ezekiel Jackson, I think for Mason Ryan and Ezekiel Jackson, the issue these guys are going to have is the fact that they are... Um, they're both going to kind of want to pin the big show. They're going to want to prove themselves by saying that they're the ones that... What the hell? What was... What is this? What the hell is Brodus doing out here? We haven't seen this guy since he got absolutely mauled by Kane in a contenders match for the ECW Championship. What business does Brodus Clay have with this match? I mean, he was introduced as his partner, but, uh, is that Big Show or, or Jackson and Ryan's? Fans seem to be reacting quite positively. Has this become a tag team match? He's obviously not in McMahon's good books if he was put through Kane a few weeks back in a contenders match. He got beaten the hell out of it. It wasn't like he just laid down and let Kane have it. I don't understand what's going on. Oh no, this is this is three on one. What the hell? Brodus Clay joining the powerhouse? I mean he'd be a natural fit. Oh my god, big show though. He'd be a natural fit. This is gonna be a, a tough match to watch. This is a standoff, three on one, and three giants against one giant. Big Show gonna give himself a little bit of rest on the outside, and of course that was a, a oh Mason Ryan, woo! Really get a taste of some of their strength. Well, countouts apparently still apply in this matchup, whether or not they are just for the Big Show, I don't know. I mean, with this being elimination. Uh, that could be a, a, a strategy to try and get at least one member out. There's nothing rougher than a three-on-one handicap match. Wow. There's nothing r rougher than a three-on-one tornado handicap match. In the, in the sense of if these three had to tag in and out, I think Big Show could very slowly work his way through them in an elimination style matchup. He could wear them down enough that they aren't able to come to the aid to break up the pins quickly, and he could work his way through all three. But in this situation, he's got every time he gets a move off on one of them, there's gonna be someone right behind him ready to connect on him. This is gonna be tough. What will be most interesting to see is who actually manages to probably get the pinfall on Big Show. I'm not trying to count the Big Show out, but you know, the guy's are the champion of champions. He went through a triple threat to win that title. He's already beaten two in one match, but admittedly they were fighting each other as well. No one was breaking up the pinfalls either. You know if he tries to pin any one of these three, they're going to be right there to help the other. I can't believe Brodus Clay, though, would actually do this, would sign up to work alongside the powerhouse. Mason Ryan, clearly the target of favor. Big Show knows that he's been always kind of deemed the weak link of the powerhouse. Ezekiel Jackson, a former ECW champion. Kozlov, a two-time hardcore champion. Mason Ryan on the losing end of a win-loss record. Not exactly been the most impactful. He's just someone that McMahon has got a lot of faith in and wants to see go the distance. A big German suplex sends Mason Ryan crashing down. I mean, sorry, sends Big Show crashing down by Mason Ryan. My bad. He's got to work fast, and I, I mean, that's not really Big Show's style. I believe disqualifications are um, a ruling in this matchup as well, so he can always hope that one of them gets themselves disqualified, but, well, I mean, what are the odds of that? 
This is just a mugging. McMahon's intentions are very clear. He wants Kane with the ECW Championship. He wants Big Show out of the picture. And he wants to do it his way. He'll, he'll buy out any superstar. He'll do whatever it takes to make it on top. To get Big Show out of the picture. And this is clear. Weaken up the Big Show for this Sunday. You know, he's got five days to recover from this three-on-one match. Win or lose. Behind the Big Show, I'd just take the loss nice and quick. I know it's not really in his style, but to take a loss would be easier in this situation. He'd be a lot more prepared for uh, this Sunday than he would be if he tried to fight. And even if he overcomes all three, what status do you think the Big Show is possibly going to be in going up against Kane? Big Show can't do anything. Trying to dish out some DDTs. That seems to be getting them down for, for a moment. Enough to get that slam there on uh, Brodus Clay. Big Show kind of getting a little bit of offense in, but this, this ain't looking too good. Make sure Ryan actually having the nerve to lift his arms up and be like, well, what are we doing? It was, it's it's going to be the best strategy to try and keep this one outside the ring. We haven't seen a three-on-one like this since uh, CM Punk went up against the powerhouse featuring Mr. McMahon, I believe it was. Back in Extreme Rules. Drops Mason Ryan flat on his head. Big Show trying everything in his power to get this, this fight turned around just a little bit. You notice Mason Ryan actually spent a little bit of time on the mat there. He's clearly starting to wear them out just that little bit. But Ezekiel Jackson is a freak of nature. There's no denying that he's, he's got the potential to win a world championship. I'm just going to pretend I didn't see Brodus Clay do that to Ezekiel Jackson. He's telling everyone to simmer down. He didn't mean to. <laughs> Big Show is just so outnumbered in this situation. And, oh! Drops Brodus Clay. And Mason Ryan going to taste a knockout punch. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get the pin. I mean, Big Show very, very boldly going in for a pinfall right in front of them. It's definitely going to weaken Mason Ryan quite a bit. See Mason Ryan now holding that. Oh, sorry, holding that head now. Some damage has definitely been done. Whoa! I don't mean to keep doing that. I'm pressing an X button. I don't know why it's randomly going for pins. Mason Ryan definitely showing some signs of hurt in this one now. Big Show is he's actually managed to get some damage off. The knockout punch is no joke. Can the Big Show really overcome this obstacle? He's showing some promise. We're being reminded of who, who is in that ring right now. Well, we were. I can't say right now. Right now is definitely not correct. Mason Ryan and Brodus Clay both showing some signs of heart. Seems like the Big Show's got this one going. Just a little bit. Oh, no. No targeting, no. Drops Ezekiel Jackson flat down on his back. Brodus. Thrown across the ring. Jackson, the only man to not show any signs of heart in this match right now. Big belly to belly. 
Well, Big Show flat down on his feet and... Big man saying, I'm out of here. Well, look at this, Big Show. Wising up a little bit, I think. Big Show and Brodus taking it, uh, taking the fight to the outside. Is this uh, uh, it seems like every time one of the members leaves the ring, it resets the count. That's going to really help them in the long run. Ezekiel Jackson now holding his head as well. So much going on at once. No, oh, showstopper. Got Brodus Clay by the throat. Oh no, this could be the beginning of the end for, for Big Show. Brodus Clay drops him. Center of the ring. Is this it? Big Show's out. Big Show managed to kick out, but at what cost? How much will that have taken out of him? Brodus Clay's finishing move connecting on Big Show. I feel like at some point the referee's got to stop and stop this one and uh, declare Big Show is unable to continue to compete too, possibly. Should he need to. This is rough. Very, very rough. Oh, Brodus! <laughs> he wants his hands on Big Show, not Jackson. Everybody holding their heads. Should have let that happen. Whoops. To be fair, I'd already pressed the move. <laughs> Trying so hard to at least eliminate one of them. My plan for this match, if it wasn't obvious, was if Big Show wins, fucking awesome. If they win, cool. <laughs> it was really just, uh, I wanted to see if I could do it. I don't mind sharing that. Ugh. Targeting in this game is ass. Trying so hard to buff a fight. Oh, there's just no selling, and that's kind of a bit of a pro. Oh, Jackson. Big Uranagi, that's gotta be it. Big, sh I mean, Brodus taking the pin from Jackson, though. And there you go. The powerhouse featuring, or maybe just a member of the powerhouse, I don't know, but Brodus Clay, the one to get the pinfall on the big show, but it was Jackson who got the finishing move in. This doesn't really clarify if Brodus Clay has joined the guys or not, but he's definitely celebrating with them. But what a victory. The Big Show finally taking his first loss here on ECW. But look at what it took. Big Show absolutely tore the roof off this place. And Mason Ryan... I don't, uh, take it easy, man. You got one win. <laughs> you didn't do anything. You were the weak link of the team. Chill. 
Mason Ryan, I guess, just riding that little bit of uh, momentum off of that victory, celebrating a little too hard. I don't really know what the point of that cutscene is, honestly. I don't know what that establishes. But we move on now to this Friday SmackDown, the final stop before Survivor Series. So tune in then to find out what happened to The Rock last week on SmackDown when he was definitely not 100% for his match against The Miz this Friday. See you guys then. Bye.